So today we're going to discuss some really exciting discoveries in regards to dark matter, but actually something coming from right here in the Milky Way galaxy, and in this case something somewhat exciting and something physical, and something that was confirmed in one of the recent studies. And so in this video we're going to be diving back into the dark matter mysteries, but mostly because for the first time ever researchers potentially detected a clump of dark matter right here in the Milky Way making this a significant step toward finally understanding what dark matter truly is. But before we discuss the study in the description, let's I guess briefly discuss some of the basics, just so that we're on the same page. So I guess super briefly, what exactly is dark matter? Well even today it's still a hypothetical form of matter that seems to only interact with stuff using gravity and not through electromagnetic or other means, which is why it seems to be so difficult to find. Now that by itself is not unusual because, for example, neutrinos are also super difficult to find, but we know they are there and they have been discovered over the years. But when it comes to the mysterious dark matter, currently its presence is only inferred based on gravitational pull of a lot of objects out there in the universe. And so according to some of the models we have today, most of the actual matter in the universe should be dark matter. With observations like this from the famous bullet cluster essentially confirming its existence. Here visible matter seems to be dislodged from the massive gravitational source when these two massive clusters collided, leaving behind all of the gas that you can see in purple, but most of the mass, which is visible in blue, seems to have passed through the collision without any physical interaction. And so it's this blue part that we think represents this mysterious substance. But ever since the original propositions in like early 1930s by Franz Zwicky, we still obviously don't really understand it very well. And though we know that pretty much almost all galaxies seem to contain dark matter, because otherwise the stars would not be spinning in these galaxies so fast, the actual particle that dark matter would be made out of remained elusive and has still not been officially discovered. And that's despite lots of different experiments that try to discover something, and though there have been some signs here and there, nothing super concrete yet. But for a very long time the leading idea was in regards to what's known as cold dark matter, CDM. And essentially here this would consist of a single type of slow moving particles that essentially just like neutrinos only seem to interact with stuff very very occasionally, and in this case only through gravity, not even through weak force like what neutrinos do. And the thing is, on the grandest scale of the universe, if this was true, this model would work amazingly well. As a matter of fact, it would explain a lot of stuff out there, and would even explain why we observe so many mysteries in the universe. But it would not explain everything, and there have been certain problems here and there that some of the other models, like Mond, tried to address. And so basically over the years, these discrepancies suggested that the dark matter model is potentially best explained by something that's a little bit more complex, and something that might involve either new forces, or just dark matter particles that are not just slow moving cold particles they might instead be something different, such as for example the mysterious axions you can learn about in one of the videos in the description. But the main point is that, well, at the moment, a particle or some kind of a physical dark matter still explains things just a little bit better than any other proposition. And if dark matter is made out of particles, the best way to explain why the Milky Way galaxy is the way it is, is to essentially assume that our galaxy seems to be located inside the very massive halo of dark matter, representing a kind of a bubble of stuff, this invisible stuff, that's keeping the galaxy together. Although I guess more realistically this is not just a single bubble, it's a collection of smaller bubbles. In this case we would refer to these as subhalos. And well, to everyone's surprise, in this new study, Sukanya Chakrabarti and the team you see here potentially discovered one of these subhalos by observing pulsars, which if confirmed would make this a groundbreaking discovery. Ok, so let's talk about what happened here and how all of this was discovered. And so here in a nutshell these subhalos would contain smaller clumps of dark matter, I guess kind of like chocolate chips inside a cookie, or raisin inside the raisin bread, that together would form the halo of the galaxy, preventing stars and matter in the Milky Way from flying apart. And so technically these subhalos are a cornerstone of dark matter models, and they were predicted to be abundant inside Milky Way sized galaxies. But finding these subhalos has been incredibly challenging. Once again, they would be invisible, they would be relatively small in size, and they could only be detected through gravitational phenomena. But in the past there have been some hints here and there, although nothing concrete and nothing that could be definitively proven. But Chakrabarti's team used something really clever. 
they used pulsars. And as you probably know, pulsars produce extremely accurate pulsations that can be actually disturbed by pretty much anything, including gravitational waves, with pulsars previously used to map a lot of gravitational effects across the universe. And so because of these very accurate cosmic lighthouses and these regular beams of energy, by carefully measuring tiny deviations, it can become possible to detect very subtle gravitational pulls from various massive objects, and especially from various invisible objects. And so this allows us to directly probe galactic mass distribution without the need for anything else. And so for this particular study, they used a set of 27 binary pulsars in order to see what they can detect. And they specifically used pairs of pulsars because they would show correlated and localized deviations, as opposed to singular pulsars, whose deviations could be caused by something else. Or just to rephrase this, if two pulsars in a binary system experience the same deviations, it means that this was a result of something from outside of the system and not something from inside the pulsar. And by using multiple pulsars in close proximity, and by seeing similar gravitational anomalies, this would imply that whatever is happening here seems to be affecting all of the pulsars in the vicinity, and seems to be an actual physical mass. But in order to make this accurate, they had to account for a lot of known effects. For example, things like gravitational radiation, and something known as Shklovsky effect, which is technically a Doppler effect, resulting from the motion of the pulsar, and a lot of additional effects that could basically change the overall pulsation timing. And in the end, once they removed all of the potential deviations, they were left with some kind of an excess power, or additional gravitational signal that could not be explained by anything in the vicinity. Or I guess just to rephrase this, the pulsations from pulsars were still being affected by something, and it involved something that was not physically visible. For example, they discovered significant correlated gravitational changes coming from a pair of binary pulsars PSR J1640 and PSR J1713, both of which experienced very similar deviations. And because of these deviations, they were able to confirm that this seems to be coming from about 2300 light years away from us, with the estimated mass of about 24 million solar masses. That's at least six times more massive than the central black hole in the Milky Way. But in this particular location, the physical baryonic matter seemed to be at least 100 times lower in mass, so approximately 240,000 solar masses. And they then essentially confirmed that there seems to be nothing here by consulting the data from the famous Gaia telescope. The Gaia telescope's stellar data is super accurate, and it obviously contains a lot of objects detected in this region, which in this case would not explain this overall mass. And so neither the gas maps nor the stellar data explain this gravitational deviation and this bizarre anomaly. As a matter of fact, the overall baryonic mass density in this region was approximately 0.084 solar masses per cubic parsec, whereas the anomaly itself seemed to contain at least 10 solar masses per cubic parsec, which would be far too dense to be any normal matter. And though I guess it could be some kind of a hidden supermassive black hole, because this is relatively close to us, chances are that by now we would have seen something, mostly because supermassive black holes tend to produce huge emissions and obviously also produce gravitational landing effects. Which means that the only possible explanation, at least for now, is that this is indeed one of these dark matter subhalos. Making this the first time ever, an actual dark matter subhalo has been directly detected right here in the Milky Way galaxy and even in our own galactic neighborhood. And that's a huge leap from simply inferring the presence of dark matter based on some other galaxies out there, to physically detecting it right here in the Milky Way, 2300 light years away from us. Which transforms the idea of dark matter from being purely theoretical to something we can now start mapping and studying in detail. And this also obviously provides direct evidence for the Lambda CDM model and for the existence of some kind of a particle that seems to act as dark matter. And so the existence of this very massive object that currently would be very difficult to explain with any other theories, is directly consistent with previous simulations and previous models, and the idea of these sub-halos creating the overall halo in the Milky Way. But importantly, this new method using pulsar accelerations and analysis of pulsar deviations opens up a completely new way for studying dark matter and even studying other anomalies that would be otherwise impossible to see except for these very precise and very accurate measurements. And so by increasing the number of pulsars and increasing the precision of these measurements, in the next few years, it might become possible to obtain much tighter constraints on dark matter halos and possibly even create an overall map of these structures across our own galaxy, which hopefully will lead us to final answers about, so what exactly is it? 
and what exactly is it made out of? I'll also possibly answer in some other questions such as why some galaxies contain no dark matter and some galaxies contain too much. And so unlike previous observations and previous methods like the famous bullet cluster, where we mostly observe this using gravitational lensing effect, this new pulsar timing technique presents us with the more direct way to physically detect gravitational signatures of various anomalies and discover individual dark matter clumps. And so if we can discover more about these subhalos and study their distribution, properties and even shapes, we might finally be able to discriminate between different theoretical models and finally discover that elusive particle. With this gravitational technique also potentially helping us discover other anomalies and leading to completely new propositions and new theories, maybe even new anomalous objects. For all we know, maybe this will lead to the discovery of dark stars and even dark galaxies. But exactly where all of this leads, only time will tell. For now, the researchers behind the study are pretty confident that as our ability to measure pulsars increases even more, and as pulsar maps improve in their overall quality, we'll very likely discover so much more in our own galaxy, allowing us to track even minute deviations, which technically has already been done in one of the most groundbreaking studies in the last few years. And this was actually the discovery of this really bizarre hum or vibration in the entire universe. You can learn about this concept in one of the previous videos in the description. But in this case, the detection of this particular subhalo and the technique used is also, of course, the testament to human ingenuity. Because of our relentless curiosity, researchers were able to discover a new technique to find something that has been bugging scientists for nearly a century. And though we're still pretty far from truly understanding what this bizarre dark matter actually is, with every breakthrough similar to this one, the path forward becomes just a little bit more clear. But until future discoveries, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access and a few more secret videos. Alternatively, you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.